Have you ever been to the LBJ Museum? There's an animatronic LBJ, and you push buttons in it, and you push a button, and it tells jokes. Great society. Look at my big old horse cock. I'm going to watch me make my <laughs> cock a helicopter. And the robot doesn't do that, but he says that. That's verbatim. <laughs> I can make it go all the way around without using my hands. Well, they didn't have the technology to make that happen when they built the animatronic LBJ. They still don't. Does he ever tell us how many babies he actually killed today? Does he ever <laughs> put a number to it for us? He goes, I don't know how many I killed, but I know I made a handful. Ha ha! <laughs> everything he says goes back to his giant yeah, penis. Every, yeah. <laughs> I didn't like JFK very much, but we worked together. Work together handling my big old cock. <laughs> <laughs> Texas and their president, right? Yeah, that's right, man. I'll tell you, I'll yeah. tell you what. So I think it's a, a well-known LBJ fact, but it's it was what tickled me the most when I because I've been to the LBJ park out in uh, Johnson City. That's what you know. It's in Johnson City because it's about referring to his genitals. <laughs> That's right. His last name wasn't even Johnson. Mm-hmm. That's really yeah. just a nickname. What was his last name again, Brian? Pecker. <laughs> <laughs> his last name was Vagina. <laughs> his last name was so weird. His anatomy was really against type. It's like a fat guy named Tiny. Yeah. That kind of deal. Right. Right. You know about his uh, his amphibious car, right? What? No. Like apparently, he had an amphibious car, and he was famous for getting people in the car and acting like he had lost control of the car, so they were all in the car and driving it <laughs> and driving it into lakes, screaming. Oh, man. Like I think that's that is my. I'm pretty sure it's true story about <laughs> it. It's so fucking funny that it almost makes up for a number of war crimes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, he's, you know, he was just, he was thrust into that position uh, at a time when perhaps he wasn't ready for it, or he was behind the assassination. One of the other. a lot of a lot of people said that about when I like ended up having some managing shifts at the bar a few years ago, and um, <laughs> right, right. I, you know, I'd like to say that the place didn't burn down and there, that there wasn't any. Right. I wasn't ready for it. I was not ready for you it. You did pretty good. I did okay. <laughs> Yeah, isn't was was that a bar that featured a lot of board games? Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, a lot of board games. With, I don't like that. With at mostly all. missing pieces, and people right. would come up right. in the middle of a busy shift and go like, <laughs> "Do you, do you know where the the blue pieces for sorry are?" And I would just and I would right. radiate anger. Like I I it would just be it would I would oh I would and sometimes I would think like Mike, you're you're right. being kind of a dick to people. <laughs> that are asking a question, but I mean, this is years after the fact, after working that working there, right. I know that I was, my reactions were actually the fact that I just didn't open face, slap them, just open <laughs> slap them in the face. Let's me know no, that, you, you know were. what? I actually was a really good employee. And no matter what the Yelp review, the the hundreds of Yelp reviews accusing me being of <laughs> sarcastic and uh, cold right. or rude and indifferent. Yeah, I was those things because you're a fucking moron. If you went to Yelp to a review about me, then that means that I was right about you. <laughs> the fact that you're getting on Yelp right. at all means my rudeness was absolutely correct because if i was rude to you and you didn't deserve it there's a million other ways you would have reacted to that like leave a bunch of drinks in the bathroom or something right to be cleaned up later yeah maybe spend too much time standing at the front of the line not moving things along yeah just a little passive aggressive i'm gonna piss off the bartender yeah so tell me about all the drinks you can make (laughs) oh boy Right. What, what? Is, what do you mean infused vodka? Oh What's that? my God. Can you show me the process of that? I've been standing in line for 11 minutes to get to the front of it. And I just realized that there's a whole myriad of things back there that were all <laughs> in perfect purview of me standing in that line for 11 minutes. <laughs> but now I'm going to slowly verbally discover each one of them. And I want you to join me on this fantastic voyage. <laughs> well, just like you were right about them for leaving the Yelp reviews, that confirming your opinion of the of the customer who you so 
you so stridently despise. You're also kind of wrong for working at a bar that sells and fews liquors and has board games and expecting, if you did expect yeah, I guess that's anything true. different from that clientele. That's, I have no, I have no <laughs> comeback for that. For the first time on this podcast, I have, I have no, <laughs> first time. I have no, no comeback for any kind of, I normally do very good with, uh, deflecting criticism in any way but you're, what you're saying right. actually hits home pretty hard and uh well it's not it's not criticism mike it's just it's just you know if you go out in a thunderstorm you shouldn't be surprised if you get wet exactly that's, you know exactly that. that's fine welcome to ins the international news service your source for the most important weird news from across the globe. With news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. This has been a lot of fun, guys, but I think people have an expectation when they when they tune into the international news server. So we actually fulfill the implied promise of the name of this particular podcast, and we provide some news as a service. Well, Kevin. welcome to the international news service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison, along with... I am Brian Camp. And I am Mike Wiebe. And this week, mm. we are... Uh, we are we are audio latchkey kids. Rudderless. Yep. Rudderless, Mike. Yes. Why is that, Mike? Mark Ryan has abandoned us. He said he says he's not feeling well, and if that's true, I hope he feels better. Right. But I do believe there was a, a Trisha Yearwood concert in Fort Worth tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he's always been a Trisha Yearwood fan. Yeah, and I don't... I he's mean, his favorite. Yeah, and mostly because he has a big old crush on her. Well, who doesn't? Did I shave my legs for this? <laughs> Is that a Trisha Yearwood sure. song? I don't actually know any of her music. Uh, did I shave uh, you know my legs for this? I used to listen to a country station, and they would play all the country greats. Kathy Matea, Trisha Yearwood, and the <laughs> queen herself. The perfection of womanhood. Mrs. Reba. McIntyre, <laughs> Reba McIntyre. They just played fancy over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad song. Well, I think Mark just found a better podcast. I think that's what's going on. It's a podcast these. about Reba, I mean, probably. <laughs> probably. This is the Reba cast. First up tonight, we're going to talk about Reba. <laughs> But yeah, be good. That'd be a good podcast where you just talk about each episode. And uh, each episode is an episode of the TV show Reba Recapped. Reba Recapped. That's the fucking name yeah. of the podcast. Reba Recap. Can we? Can we? We're rebranding next week. I think let's totally switch. This would be way better. Yeah. Because one, I kind of like Reba. Reba McIntyre. Reba McIntyre. <laughs> She was just living a, a hard scrabble life as a single mom. I don't think that was real life. I think that was just a sitcom. No, I no. think it was based on her life. It was based oh, on was a it? true story. Yeah. Reba McIntyre. That's right. <laughs> Daughter of a coal miner. All right. Is there any news that's not Reba related? Yeah, <laughs> right. I don't know how it could be newsworthy if it's not. But I, I only had Reba stories. I'm going to have to wing it this week, guys. All right. The first story here. Is mm -hmm. from the BBC. That boys club. Oh, that boys club. That boys club. Which I realized we start a lot of these with BBC stories, and the reason is they have a lot of dumb stories that are really short. I uh, yeah, I think they just do it because they're. <laughs> so explosive experts in Germany were recently called to investigate what looked like a grenade in a plastic bag. The item was spotted by a jogger in a forest near the city of Passau. Police said experts soon realized the item was what they called a rubber dummy, and the bag also contained an empty tube of lubricant, 
two unused condoms in a tin, and a USB cable. Oh, wow. To identify the rubber grenade, police then conducted an online search, and they said they were surprised to learn that what they found was a sex toy modeled on a hand grenade. Police released a statement saying the items were disposed of, but then they wondered, quote, how they came to be there and why they remained there can only be imagined. Uh, Kevin, somewhere on this packaging, was there a label that read UFO detector number 447? <laughs> yeah. No, this it didn't have the packaging. It was just the uh, rubber hand grenade. It was a grenade with a flashlight hole. I would think it's an insertion device. Oh, you put it in you, not you in it. Yes. Yes, I would think. So it's a grenade you put inside you and then the USB cable. How long is the USB cable? Is it one of those real tiny ones? Because that's weird. I can show you a picture of it. Oh, Let please. Me, oh, good. Uh, please. Yes. I bet if you show me the picture, I can tell you what model it is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you said this was in Germany? Yes. Did you notice that the packaging for the lubricant is... I guess Aqua Glide might be a trade name, but it's written in... Aqua Glide. <laughs> How would Aqua Glide. Glide. <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? In the UK that they are this doing stories on uh, things that I could probably walk past every single day in a fairly suburban part of Austin, Texas. Right. Didn't they just open up a bag of trash? Yeah. Isn't that what this is? It's just a bag of trash? Well, it, it seemed like it was fairly organized. Like I said, there, were, there was the grenade, the lubricant, two unused condoms. Unused condoms, that's not trash. No, here's what it is. Like I can, I don't know that that's a grenade. That does not look like that looks like a i don't know it looks like more of a pump than a grenade and here's why the germans were confused because they're used to those grenades with the big wooden sticks sticking out of them oh yeah you know uh the german army built things for ease of use and the american army built things for ease of carrying that's mm. why they're designed it's a design issue i wow. believe yeah why they were done that profound. way who who won that war who won that war by the way <laughs> Uh, let me think. Let me think. Uh, I feel like there's that would a, be the second one, right? The did second... I get to the end of that that episode of the History Channel? I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the Irish won that war. <laughs> Hell yeah, they fucking did. They did. Norway kind of stared out of it in a, maybe a, a bad way, but we'll forgive them because we like the Norwegians. They make cool face paint, so it's they true. get a pass. What? I don't know. What about face paint? I'm interested in this. Unlike everything else we ever discuss. Uh, <laughs> I just meant I was referring to all the metal metal bands. Oh, okay, okay. Black metal bands. I think they do a real good job with that. I'm proud of them. I will second that. I don't know much else about Norway, to tell you the truth. F fjords. That's Norwegian, right? Fjords. Have you, have you performed in Norway, Mike? I have a couple times. Uh, beautiful. Are the people stoic? I imagine that people are stoic. <laughs> Well, a lot of them would come up to me and they have kind of a funny accent. They would be like, you are from America. That is the home of Reba McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you get it. So mm -hmm. they, they're fine by me. Yeah. Reba McIntyre. They almost sound like they are from Illinois. When you when you describe their voice, it's almost a Chicago. I mean, sound. everybody constantly says Norway is the Illinois of the of Europe. So in this picture, uh, yes. for and for the listener, we're looking at it looks to be a patch of grass. In the center of the grass, there is the grenade that that to me looks like a, a blood pressure thing, like a pump. Yeah, like a bulb, like a like a turkey baster bulb. Uh, but yeah, I mean, admittedly, I have wanted to stick some of those inside me many times. Well, yeah. <laughs> To the right of the the bulbish grenade is a what looks to be a tube of aqua glide, which we are to assume is a lubricant. Aqua glide. To the upper left <laughs> is the two ends of a USB cord that is mysterious to us because one end of the cord looks, looks a little rusty. Looks, looks to be well, it may not be rust, <laughs> yeah. uh, depending on what somebody <laughs> did with this cord. There's a but there, yeah, the USB side is stained in some way and then at the other side of it if it's the same cord yeah it looks like a power cord like a like an adapter of some kind yeah 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 like okay, a yeah what is that three eight inch is that what that is it's start to my heart 
<laughs> and then on the lower left, the left of the grenade, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm not 100%. Maybe that's the tin. But doesn't that just support the idea that this is just a bag of trash? I don't know. Either way, you probably shove it up your, you probably shove it up your butthole if you had to. Yeah, I mean, you got if you got that whole thing of aqua glide, you can probably put all that. You can probably fit all of it up there. It's probably a, it's probably right, a, right. a German uh, magician that shoves it all up here, but they like pops them out in different order. So this is part of a a show. Yeah, that's part okay. of a, probably a Scheitzen show. And and they, <laughs> you know, he lays down, he lubes it up, he puts in the grenade, he puts in the cord. He puts in the weird pump looking thing. And then weirdly enough, the cord comes out. Then the grenade comes out. Mm-hmm. And then the pump looking thing comes out. How did he switch him around mm-hmm. in there? Mm-hmm. And then he goes, you know, right. glide. <laughs> I find it hard to believe based on pornography that is available to us that any German is surprised yeah. that something is a sex toy. Like that's well, it's, that's the it's part a of the story it's that a nice club story. So that makes me wonder if it was some right. Just they hate some, the Germans. They hate and the probably Germans. some poncy, you know, <laughs> highfalutin sort of. Oh dear! Like walk, you know, it happened to be in <laughs> Germany. To you know, he was going to like a big monocle convention or something, and was walking back mm-hmm. and just saw just some regular trash and was like, oh dear. <laughs> I must report on this. Rubbish. Look, look at this rubbish. Oh, it's not rubbish at all. It's for anal, anal pleasure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's for ribald activity. Well, mission solved. It's solved. Yeah. Okay. Case closed. Yeah. Our next story comes to us from Live Science. Life Science? Like seventh grade science? Like live, but it's life. live science. And then it's a science Coach book. Collins? Just gonna put on La Bamba for us to watch. In a this isn't way. earth science. This is biology. I just think they should stop teaching science in schools. I mean, that's it's been a problem <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Well, they don't do a good job of it, Mike. So there's yeah, there's that. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, they should just teach religious studies. They should teach the Bible, yeah. which is the first right. science text <laughs> of all time. <laughs> And the sad thing is, there's a bunch of people that would probably agree with my very silly joke. <laughs> we might have just solidified some listeners. With yeah. Maybe that's the, maybe, you know, screw this Reba recap. I don't want to pretend to be in that world even for an hour or two a week or, you know, ultimately more with like promoting stuff. But if you are willing to do that, there's an immediate like payday and just going like vaccines isn't real. Jesus is though. <laughs> like if there's an immediate payday, if you can commit to that bit, you know, yeah. the right wing grift is strong right now. And I wish I could figure out how to make money off those fucking dodos and not have to pretend <laughs> to be one of those dodos because ultimately it's less about like, oh, I don't want to ruin my reputation. It's more of just like I would get bummed out pretending to have to be one of those guys, you know, and not actively making fun of them. It would be it would be right. it would start to right. like it's not a moral thing. It would just start. To, it would just be really not fun immediately. Like I tried doing an alt right character right. on stage for a while named Red Pill Randy, and I, I, I and the bit was <laughs> Red Pill Randy was very like you know alt right guy, but he 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 was like the most alpha guy, but he spoke with a giant lisp and he couldn't say his R's. So he, and Red Pill feminism is the cancel and just like and it just and it was one of those things like it did okay at all thing around it and an outfit. But I just right. immediately got, I just it didn't enjoy even pretending to do that for a little <laughs> bit. Like it was too like close to something that sucks so fucking much. Well, people always enjoy the thing that is the safe version of the thing they're supposed to fear, kind of. What? So like, <laughs> or the thing they're not supposed to like. So it's like a... Uh, you're like your rock and roll guys like yeah i mean i know we we we, we can't like any rock and roll guys because they all think these horrible things but this one thinks agrees yeah, with us yeah. and it's like this way that you can okay. you can plug into this world that you aren't otherwise yeah. a part of it's not it's not you know all vaccines do mike is cover up the power of prayer <laughs> I mean, that's all they're doing <laughs> You know, they the people want to claim that that the reason people aren't getting sick is the efficacy of the vaccine. All that's doing is masking the works of God, and 
Like, yeah, that makes sense. It does make yeah, sense. He got the vaccine, but he sense. also prayed. Which one? Which one do you think did right. did the heavy lifting there? Which one do you think really made it happen? Right. <laughs> Why is science so afraid of faith? That's what I want to know. Because I think exactly. they can coexist, but don't don't ask a scientist that they they won't they won't believe that because they're so threatened. And if you're so sure of what you're saying and you're so so sure of your science, then how can you be threatened by something that you don't even believe in? That's the real question. If they're getting up. If they're uh, getting so upset about these questions I'm asking, doesn't that tell you something? Doesn't that tell you that maybe they're, you know, you know, if you're, if you're scared of something, isn't it usually for a reason, you know, like, like I, I'm, I'm scared that a snake's going to bite me maybe because that snake is actually going to bite me. So if you're a scientist and you're scared of someone asking a simple question about faith, well, maybe that faith is a snake that is going to bite you because you don't want to get bit by the truth. That's all there is to it. Anyway, I got to go. I, I got to go secretly look at some gay pornography right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our next story comes to us from Life Science. Now, li- you say Life, life. Science? Life Science. Life? It's like Live Science, but it's not pronounced Live <laughs> Science. It's pronounced No, life. I think it is Live Science. We're living. No, you know what? We're Living Science. It's like that band, Live. Science. live. It's like that band Live. I'll only love you. you love. Fear is not the way. <laughs> Lightning crashed on the Caribbean Hill. The band Live. <laughs> you were too good at that, Mike. So yeah, from from Live. I'm sorry, Live Lives, Science. Thank you, Jesus. And right. the title is right. How Scientists Caught Footage of the Kraken After Centuries of Searching. While legends. Of giant squid go back thousands of years, they're almost never seen in water. Instead, they're mostly found washed, dead and washed up on shore or caught in deep-sea fishing nets. Apparently, giant squid have only been caught on video twice, once in 2012 off the coast of Japan and once in 2019 in the Gulf of Mexico. According to a new study, the giant squid's evasiveness is due in part to its enormous eyes. It's like it's like Anna Joy Taylor. That's see, I actually just referenced oh, okay. a current celebrity, a very current celebrity. Are you saying she's she's part squid? Yeah, she's got big old fucking weird eyes that are on the sides of her head, and she's gorgeous. She's she's she gorgeous. Beak? She kind of does have a beak. She kind of does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Yes. Is this? I, I, I hate to, to cut no, you no, off, but I think you enjoy it a little bit. I do. I do kind of enjoy <laughs> it. The title seemed to imply that this was going to be a story about a cryptid, which we, you know we love discussing uh, here on the International News Service. The, until like the last 20 years, the giant squid was, was considered a cryptid. Oh, I don't believe that. Because it had been seen so few times that you know there was a, a corpse or anything that they could confirm. But no one thought that they were the same thing as a kraken, did yeah. they? A titan! No. From Clash of the Titans. That's, yeah, that's, that's what that's from. When they said release, when the Stygian witches were talking about using mm-hmm. Medusa to fight the Kraken. I can do it. I can, I'm just, I don't know, I just didn't get the reaction I wanted. I'm just wondering if you guys want me to do it again. I want you to do it again. <laughs> thank you. I feel better now. It's, thank you for okay. doing that. But yeah, that 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 was just a movie. That wasn't actually what the Kraken was. Yeah, supposed it was to based look like. on the fucking true Greek myths, which are based on the real things right. that happened. It's just like the Bible. But the Kraken was a was considered in from. myth a giant squid, and so they would uh, attack ships. And you know, wait, it wasn't kind of a them. handsome handsome fish man with rock hard abs and four arms. <laughs> Yeah, there's no reporting in any of the literature about having kraken abs. Swimming's a good workout, yeah. I bet. Why that don't why don't yeah. more fish have abs? Now that's a, a story <laughs> I could I could dig into. The giant squid has the largest eyes in the animal kingdom. They're about the size of basketballs, and this makes them extra sensitive to the bright lights mounted on subs and underwater cameras. It's crazy that uh, that. Uh, like Michael Jordan could palm a giant squid's eyes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Michael Jordan, fuck them squids. 
So when research vehicles get near giant squid swimming grounds, Fuck them squids. it's likely the squid. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck them uh, it, so it's likely that when they get when the vehicles get near these swimming grounds, that the squid uh-huh. see the light and they retreat because of how big and sensitive their yeah. eyes are. So to correct for this, research are they cowardly? No, they're just. You know, they they're like, what the hell is that? And they do they have eyelids? Ooh, no, that's a good question. They're staring at all times. Do fish have eyelids? I think some fish do. No, fish don't have eyelids. Are sharks fish? Yes. Wait, they don't. They just roll their eyes back, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they roll their eyes back because they're like they're like teenage girls. They're like, Ugh. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. Oh my god, are you being for real right now? Mm. Is this you imitating a teenage girl or a shark? Both. <laughs> That literally, the, but sharks are more like, all right, I'm going to eat you. This is so random. <laughs> I'm going to eat a license plate. Whatever. So to correct for this, research teams in 2012 and 2019 turned off their vehicle's lights when they got into areas where giant squid were likely to be. And they lit their cameras with a dim red light instead of the bright white lights that are typically used. The reason they use red lights is that most deep sea creatures are sensitive to blue light, but they can't see the wavelengths from red lights. So to capitalize on this, researchers then created a blue luminescent lure that they mounted on the camera arm and it mimicked a bioluminescent jellyfish. And, you know, the other the other issue, mm-hmm. too, is whenever you're a kid and you're um, and you're in the library uh, because you don't have any friends and you're maybe one of the reasons you don't have any friends is because you're exclusively taking uh, books about cryptids and reading them the whole time and then carrying them with you and and having lots of points to make in class when someone says uh something uh about, are you sports. about kids or are you talking about me today i'm ta- yeah i'm talking about the through line uh that we have uh in our lives <laughs> that have led us to this point right now but all those books, whenever you read about giant squids, would have that awesome drawing of a fucking, you know, insanely huge octopus who has tentacles that can wrap over the entire mast of a, of a full-on schooner, maybe that's pirate ship or whatever, and it's breaking it apart. So you think like, oh, cool, giant squid, man. There's, that's going to be awesome when we finally find them, if they exist. How big could they get? And then you see a picture like that right. that's like, oh, I'm pretty sure that uh, my buddy Ben Johnson could have one of those in his one a tank that he owns. Like, yeah. it looks <laughs> hey, <Ben. laughs> small. Yeah, was, so the two yeah. giant squid that have been photographed in this manner were both juveniles. And they were about 10 to 12 feet long. Make them say, ah, you're a fine looking squid. Won't you back that ass up? And the funny thing about squids is they always go backwards. So when they back that ass up, they would be actually going backwards. I don't think they're going backwards. Yeah, that's a weird thing. Let's talk about that. Squids. Are they going backwards all the time? I kind of think they are because they're eyeballs, but their mouth or is their mouth behind them? Is their mouth going backwards i think they just swim on their back but forwards so do they think humans are always going backwards and they're and that squid are going forwards they're like they i think they, they don't have a front and back Ooh. in the way that we do i think they're kind no, of they don't. they're like omnidirectional in a way that we aren't because with those big old squid eyes they can kind of see in <laughs> any direction yeah they probably have really good peripheral vision they'd be good boxers i mean they're also a different species than we are. <laughs> well, don't be a speciest. Come on. Now you just said we something can. that might actually lose yeah. us real listeners. <laughs> right. You don't have to go down that yeah. road, Kevin. You're better than that. I, I apologize to our squid listeners out there. No, the Kevin, world the Kevin's seas. sentiment. Kevin's real sentiment is fuck them squids. <laughs> 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 so the two squid, giant squid that were photographed in this manner were both juveniles. And they were about 10 to 12 feet long. But researchers believe these techniques can now be refined. So they believe that they can now refine these to capture images of adult giant squid, which have been recorded, again, washed up on beaches, as long as 46 feet. God, that's like damn. four stories. That would be cool to see that. But again, it would be really also double cool. It's a second thing there. 
if you would also have to give so say you get a 46 foot giant squid and you film them underwater okay. you have to one get the special kind of lenses or whatever i don't know what kind of the the light thing is um what, what do you say it's like a blue light or whatever the special blue it's a, light it's a red light because the red light red. but then yeah. the only way it's going to be cool is if you get like I guess six point six six dummies of me to have uh-huh. next to it for scale, so people can understand. That's the only oh, way people can right. understand. If there's six six and a half ish versions of me, and I can't uh-huh. do it. Like there, I, there can't even be one version of me because I just don't. I get cold real easy, and that's probably going to be super cold down there. Are you just covering up the fact that you can't swim? I can. I've told you I can swim. I killed a fucking. I filled a tiger shark with my. With, well, I wasn't with my hands. I had a. I had a, I had a harpoon right. gun. Four years old. Well, you told us that, but we've never seen you swim. I was. I was in a bulking phase. I was in a bulking phase, and I didn't want to take my shirt off. When, when, when I'm on a when I'm on a bulking phase, I look puffy. I look bulky. That's part of. That's part of bodybuilding. Oh, okay, but how does that impact your ability to swim? Because I'm not going to take my shirt off. In front of people when I'm looking puffy, but you could swim in your shirt. No, uh, you can't. Do you, that. can't I, you, you really can't do that. That's not. I think a, it's a good lesson. Listen, lesson for the listeners, Mike. Uh, that that I hope they'll realize that there is there is nothing you are covering up with your shirt that is more distracting than yep. you swimming with a shirt on. Okay, like, that is just Ain't it the just tooth. get over it. That's a that's a that's yeah. us doing you a favor. And it's not comfortable. Yeah, it's not comfortable. Right. And then you have to carry on a wet shirt all day or wear a wet shirt all day. There's nothing better than swimming and drying off and putting on a dry shirt. I don't swim Feels because <laughs> I'm, I've been in a, in a bulking phase for the last many, many years. Oh, okay. When you've already, you've already proven that you know how. So what's did the it, point? Done it. Did it good. <laughs> did it. Done it. Did it good. Same as saying. You know who coined that term? You know who coined that? I think you just did. That's what that nope. That's what LBJ said after he won Vietnam. <laughs> that's right. Did it done it? Did it good. And then he whipped out his cock and said, Here you go, Viet Cong. That's right. He finally killed enough kids that he won. <laughs> he won. Did he win the war by showing his He did it by he, whenever or? they talk about the helicopter out of Saigon. That was LBJ's <laughs> <laughs> His hands on his hips, just yep, just swiveling around. He made around. that same helicopter sound too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe it. I believe it. I guess that's a history they don't teach you. That in school. is what they don't teach you in history mm. class because you have fucking dumb coaches teaching all your classes. <laughs> that's true. One sec, I met you guys in a history class taught by a coach. Yep. That's actually correct. I yeah, I don't remember his he name. Was, yeah. was, cool, but though. like, and I, you know, I'm not just saying this because he's a listener and a Patreon subscriber. <laughs> but uh, Coach mm-hmm. Scott was actually it was actually a really right. good coach, and he seemed to actually care about uh care about that class. Yeah, right. And also the women's swim class that he taught. So <laughs> maybe he had more to to do. Yeah, he wasn't there very long. He's a swim coach. What I mean, what do you do? You just sit there and go like, go faster. <laughs> when you dive in, just, right. just swim more. Or, what do you say so, we get on to the, the next story? Are so we squid, done talking about squids? squids? Am I right? <laughs> right? Right. So our next story is from The Takeout, which is a like a food blog. Oh, The Takeout. Yeah. A London film producer named Gareth Wilde recently made the news when he announced that after six years... He'd parked in every parking spot in his local supermarket. He explained on Twitter that he always shops at the same grocery store and that, quote, after quite a few years of going each week, I started thinking about how many different spots I'd parked in and how long it would take to park in them all. I'm unhappy with this story. I am unhappy with this British person. I am excited because finally a story that my mom can listen to. Finally, <laughs> right. a story that isn't about sexually aggressive cryptids, that isn't about, uh, you know, anal sexual trash. Right. 
Anal trash, right? A fucking story about parking. This is something my mom her. Perfect. would love. And parking at a grocery <laughs> store on top oh of that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is, this is going to knock her orthopedic socks off. We'll make this one into an NFT and give it to your mom. <laughs> as, as soon as she starts hearing this in her mind, she's going to queue up five fun parking stories of her own. Yeah. Five times she was at Kroger. I don't know and that they even need happened. to get queued. They are in the chamber. They are ready, <laughs> ready to go. Ready to go. There were carts everywhere. Cha- they're in the chamber, and the safety is off. <laughs> Every cart had a receipt in it, Michael. And I was just thinking, who buys that much baloney? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe they were having a party. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But then I thought, who has a baloney party? But then I thought, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who was going to help that woman get the watermelon in her trunk. So I just stopped and helped her out. You know, now that I think about this, this is our second parking lot story. Because we had the Raven, the robber Ravens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And now we have the guy parking in all the spaces. Maybe we're a parking all podcast. Right. I bet Reba parked. God, I gotta, I gotta, I wanna, if we could if we could get a story about Reba McIntyre trying to park. <sighs> If we would have, we'd be on to something. He then used a satellite image to create a map of the store's 211 spaces and made a colored spreadsheet to track uh, which spaces he had parked in. And then when he clicked that he had parked in that space, an image of Rocky Balboa with a, his, uh, his mitt over his head <laughs> in victory would pop up. Okay. However, these 211 spaces do not include the store's handicapped or motorcycle spaces, as the man did not have a motorcycle, and he is not handicapped. So on the last on the last one that he pulled in, do you think he was just like, and now the pussy comes to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, he said he makes about one trip per week to the grocery store. He expected to complete his project much sooner. But he said the whole thing was derailed by coronavirus. Maybe the worst thing, maybe the worst thing about that whole fucking situation. Right, right. He's now happy to share his accomplishment and his parking advice with the world. I feel like this is a modern update of a wind in the willows story. I'm an old hedgehog who takes his boogie to the market and I've walked in every place at the market. Right. I kind of want to, you know, I will say, though, because uh, I often think that this uh, moralistic shithole of a country might entropy on itself. And I think, where would I move were that to happen? And I know there's a lot of bad stuff over there in the UK, but little villages where this makes the news seem like, uh, wow, it's a great place where the town gets rallies around someone's uh Pillows being extra fluffy or something like that. <laughs> well, I think he's in London, right? Yeah, he's in London. I also looked up. It says he in the uh, in, on his Twitter and in the article that he's a filmmaker or a film producer. Mm. But then I looked up his IMDb and he had produced one short film, and then he produced a show that I couldn't figure out where it was actually broadcast. Oh, he's a dabbler. Just showed people short films. Yeah, I know. I know. I know a lot of filmmakers here in Austin, right. Texas, too. I'm sure. And their TikTok videos are something. Right. I'm sure a lot of them approach you at the bar for the the missing Trivial Pursuit pie pieces. Yeah. So they couldn't finish yeah. their game because they weren't there. <laughs> and then asked you about all the, <laughs> all the infused yeah. vodka. I got a script. I got a script. It's kind of like the Avengers, but they're all Wolverines. <laughs> the character Wolverine or actual Wolverine, the think animal of, Wolverine. Think of, no, they're all like Wolverine with knife hands. Think about it. If it was all of it was the Avengers, but it was all Wolverine. It's five Wolverine. That'd be fucking cool. Because he's the best one anyway. <laughs> That is a good idea. Guy that works right. in the barbecue pit that wears exclusively horror movie t-shirts. Right. And has sideburns that are cover his entire cheeks. What can I say to make you go away as fast as possible? Yeah. You go, go write that script. I'm not going to write it. I'm just going to wing it. We're going to shoot it on my iPhone. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> was wondering if you'd want to be the tall wolverine oh what are all the wolverines tall wolverine short wolverine girl wolverine <laughs> they want it diverse so gay wolverine <laughs> oh no uh so our next our last story comes to us from pop sugar what they love that yeah. diversity in marvel Autistic Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> bet there's a lot of. I bet the word "bub" comes up in that a lot. Oh, they say it every time. That's what. That's what one of Wolverine's catchphrases. Right. That's their love language. Fuck you, bub. <laughs> <laughs> that's his bub language. Now, when Wolverine says, "I'm the best at what I do, and what I do ain't pretty," are each of them the best at something different? No, it's all the same. <laughs> right. Right. I don't want. I don't want them to be too different. The diversity is just a Catholic Wolverine, <laughs> Mormon Wolverine, <laughs> country Wolverine, and punk rock Wolverine. Oh, man. This is quite, And they all get together and go collection. stab people with knife hands. <laughs> and at one point, one of the Wolverines just pops out his middle claw and holds it up and he goes, fuck you. And it looks like the biggest metal middle finger. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> it sounds great. It sounds like something that somebody should support. I'm assuming that, that the reason we the know... Script's these out Wolverine, there. I mean, the script's right. out there. <laughs> do no, you think there's a lot he's, of, he's just going to wing it. Do you think there's a lot of character building to establish how these Wolverine characters are different from one another? I mean, why would you waste your time with that? You just want to see them (laughs) fucking fight people. Do do their shirts just label them as Catholic Wolverine or autistic Wolverine? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Double part. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'd watch it, Mike. I think I think that customer has has something going. I think there's something there. I can get. I can put you two in touch. Please do not. Easily put you in touch. (laughs) Please do not do that. I, I actually I was like, I probably can't because he does you don't have a Facebook account and he exclusively has oh, a Facebook account. A group of Wolverines is called a pack, a gang, or a mob. And they their mission is to fight people who are t- talking about vaccines too much. It's basically the capital riots, but it's all Wolverines. The shit would have gone down different. <laughs> and they just cut open Nancy Pelosi that Bitch, Nancy Pelosi's door. That'll get us some pans. <laughs> well, so our final story comes to us from Pop Sugar. Pop Sugar, come on, Kevin. Pop Sugar is like a lifestyle blog. I believe uh, one in two women under the age of forty go there at least once a week. That's what I want. No. That's what I want, ladies, to call me when I'm fifty-five. Pop oh, Sugar. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Oh oh. <laughs> Oh, my girls down at the Waffle House love me. Those are I call them my girls. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I call them on, it's Sonic. I call them all the I call them all my girls, and they call me Pop Sugar. And sometimes they give me a free Coney. You ever offer them a ride home? You need a you need if you ever need a ride home, feel free to call Just me. Because you, you want them to feel safe, right? I have a Nokia phone that I answer always. <laughs> well, you've got. You got goals. That's good. I have this Nokia that I put on my, I have a holster for it. <laughs> you just call all, put me, put, put me in your contacts as pop sugar. Right. <laughs> You've got pop sugar written in, in like boat registration letters in your back window of your pickup truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. It's a little crooked, but yeah, so the little stickers, individual letters you yeah. have to buy. Right. It's pretty straight, but you eyeballed it. Pop sugar's busy. He's got to go see his girls, his girls <laughs> down at the down at the Starbucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're so happy to see you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you guys both have cats, right? There's a cat that lives at my house. Yeah, I don't know. Personal. I mean, yeah. Brian, Brian, you have a cat, right? I mean, I've I've had cats. I'm aware of cats. There's a cat that lives in your house currently. Yes. Have you guys ever noticed that your cat's butt? Seems to come into contact with everything in your home. No, what? no, I've well, never. Well, a sixth that. grader named Caden Griffin recently confronted this Kaden. with his science fair project titled "Does Your Cat's Butthole Really Touch All the Surfaces in Your Home?" 
precocious. <laughs> First, he and his mother tested which activity lead to a cat's butthole touching touching a surface by applying red lipstick to their two cats' buttholes mm. and then giving their cats a series of commands, including mm. sit, wait, lie down, and jump up. Yeah, cats will not respond no, to any of those things. That's right. a, that is a fact. And I had the coolest, best cat of all time. R.I.P. Gizmo, a.k.a. Robert. Yeah, cats did, but he does it. He didn't. There was no. They, that's not what a cat does. Are you sure? I'm. I'm a little worried. This kid is a future serial killer, and he was doing that to a. I'm. I'm not happy with where this story is right. going. You think did well, he so, scoop some homeless people up from the street yes. and slathered <laughs> lipstick on their asses exactly. and told them to sit? And lay down? I'm a little right. worried that yeah, he found some people. Mm-hmm. This was like a hyper rich kid. This sort of a uh, sort of You're- a. a your cadence kittens yeah <laughs> it's like a young young robert durst type kid right, right. He probably doped him up real good these poor homeless folks caught him home right. yeah put him in kitty cat outfits for sure but he right. was like right. now's the time when we get now's the time when we put the lipstick on the butthole but this is just for an experiment spread the cheeks <laughs> <laughs> Well, so there is an inconsistency here. So remember that he had two cats. Well, they determined that, quote, long and medium-haired cats' buttholes made no contact with soft or ha- or hard surfaces mm-hmm. at all. But short-haired cats made no contact on hard surfaces. But, quote, we did see evidence of a slight smear on a soft bedding surface. If you have a short-haired cat... And they may be lying on a pile of laundry, an unmade bed, or other soft, uneven surface. Then their butthole may be touching those surfaces. Unquote. I think that he was probably putting lipstick on those buttholes for aesthetic purposes, and then forgot that <laughs> right. he had a fucking science test. It was like, ah. Mm-hmm. But see, they also mention long-haired, medium-haired, and short-haired are all mentioned here. Right. But he only has two cats. Maybe shaved one of them. Yeah, maybe shaved he them. cut one of their hairs halfway through. Mm-hmm. Which okay. is as easy to do as putting lipstick on a cat's butthole, right. I'm sure. <laughs> right. That's not a mean thing to do to a cat at all. Yeah. They enjoy being held and having sticks rubbed on their anuses. Yeah. That's a real good pet owner there, Caden. If he pulled, if it'd be funny if his mom, you know, <laughs> comes in to take him to school and she just sees the experiment and just goes, my lipstick. <laughs> That's right. The original experiment was, will my mother notice that I've rubbed her lipstick on my cat asses? <laughs> That's the, she caught him in the act. So it had to quickly shift to something else. Yeah. Cause if, like, in that case, then I'm kind of on this kid's side. Otherwise, right. if it was just animal molestation, then I'm not on this kid's side. Right. Okay. Right. Well, they concluded that a, quote, cat's butthole has not and will not touch all the things and surfaces in your home, unquote. Caden received an A-plus on his project, and his mother explained that no cats were harmed in the making of his science fair project. More like a science foul project. Oh, I would say that too. <laughs> <laughs> Does it harm an animal to, I didn't think we liked testing cosmetics on animals. This is not even, I mean, this is exactly well, what this is, right? This is, yeah, this is straight up. And this you're, is, you're this putting is, cosmetics on. An yeah. Animal, this is seems. why we got mad at the mm-hmm. Sally K beauty supply company years right. and years it's, ago. Explains Gillette. Matthew this Broderick. is what Gillette does. Right. You know what the worst thing is? If you get that cat's butthole touching stuff, you're going to get bacteria on mo- molecules on it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Actually, that was a callback. Great Sorry, show. that was a callback. But no, it's a callback you, within a full circle. I think, yeah, I think if you're, if you're calling back to the episode itself, I think that is the full circle moment. I think you have. Officially. When is a callback? Then, based on that, all callbacks will be full circles. No, 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 no. Callbacks, you can't full circle a prior episode, right? Can't you? So when I when when we referenced, uh, or when I was talking about the New Zealand bioluminescent sharks, okay, 
that would have been a callback. Okay. Mm-hmm. These arbitrary rules are really going to help us make a winning, a winning product. I did have a new segment for this week, oh. but it was only for this week and I had forgotten about it. So we'll put it here on the end and see what you guys think, which is we have, we have a, a special, the story itself is not in the spirit of inter, the international news service, but the headline is the most perfect headline I've read in 2021. Would you like to hear it? I would love to hear it. Boulder's Block Road in Boulder Canyon near Boulder, according to Boulder County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Good for them. That is, and that's from KKTV <laughs> 11. Say it again. I like that. I want to say it again. I want to listen to it and take it in again. Okay. Okay. Boulder's Block Road in Boulder Canyon near Boulder, according to Boulder County Sheriff's that's Office. That's pretty good. Somebody had fun that day. Yeah, and I appreciate it. But they, like, it's rare that somebody does something cute and I go like, eh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> like I normally am very, very put off by cuteness. And uh, right. Right, right then and there, I actually really uh, kind of enjoyed that. I, yeah, I feel like somebody went, there's boulders near Boulder, and then it just took off. Keep going! I think, well, I think we did it. I think we done did it. I think yeah. we did it. I think we did it. Well, thank you for listening to the International News Service. Yeah. Uh, please rate, review, subscribe, and tell somebody about it. Tell us. someone. And if just you want, grab. Just go up to somebody. Don't grab them. Let's just be safe. Go. It could be a stranger, but probably someone mm-hmm. you know. Embrace them. And then whisper seductively in your in their ear. You need to listen to the fucking international news service, or I will send Reba McIntyre <laughs> to your house with a knife. You got to get close enough that they can feel the warmth of your breath in their ear. Yeah, like it's an almost yeah, it's the moist warmth of your breath. You need it. You need this in your life. You've been living like a fool. You've been living like a like a man with no cause, like a man with no tether. But once you listen to this podcast, it's going to make you feel all the more better. I think just say that to them, and I think that that will it just it'll help us out. <laughs> just right. it'll help us right. out. Right. Demanding people do something against their will is typically the best way to get voluntary I, I, compliance. I, mean, I think that's <laughs> that's exactly how religion works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that is true. Um, can I plug something real quick? God damn yeah, it! Yeah, tell us what you have to plug. I know you have a new project. I have uh, there's a couple things. There's uh, Zach and Mike uh, make three podcasts, but I've also got uh, Riverboat Gamblers have a new seven inch coming out on vinyl, and we covered a Ramones song. I got one of the Ramones to sing back up vocals which is pretty cool and you can pre-order it at go to gamblers forever forever gamblers.com or find us at any of our socials riverboat gamblers thank you <laughs> and it's it's a really limited one right yeah there's like uh i don't know 700 or 800 copies and some are on pink and some are on yellow and yeah it's for all you vinyl nerds out there Please, please buy my stuff. (laughs) That's right. Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.